why first of all um, during uh, this uh, presentation we talk about mls laser therapy because you know that every kind of laser is different from the other to talk about laser it means that we are talking about something very 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 huge a huge uh, uh, situation that is uh, mm, contained inside the word laser. It means light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. MLS is something special and thanks to this kind of technology we are able to deal a lot of situation and to have a very good results during the pathology. So now we talk about the use of laser in dermatology. First of all, as we are doctors, what have we to take in account before starting a therapy? The first situation is to have a good patient history, to have as, as we can, as it, it, it's um, up to when it is possible, because especially in Italy, uh, veterinary medicine sometimes is blocked for uh, the cost for, uh, to get to a right diagnosis, to get the exact diagnosed pathology, so we are uh, sure of what we are dealing with and based on this pathology we have the possibility to set the right parameters inside the device and then we are able to start the treatment. Now let's see what is laser useful for and how and which are the results that we can obtain using MLS laser therapy. As we started from the, human med, uh, from the human medicine, especially in physiotherapic uh, problems, uh, the first were born for locomotion, but we'll talk about them in the next uh, uh, presentation. Now, as we saw very good result in dermatology when we use the laser in physiotherapy, for example, uh, for uh, bad sores, uh, for uh, big wound, we moved to dermatology as next step. So, for example, we are very, um, we get very good result uh, for edema. Uh, this is a clinical case from France where a dog uh, that had surgery was not able to heal the edema of the of the leg, and this was the result after the applications. Then a very special situation is the healing of the skin wounds. I mean wounds when I have a, a loss of tissues, when I have no more skin and I'm not able to get surgery to close it, and I have to make a second intention closure of the wound. In this situation, this is a case of a, it's a, call it the gloving injury. It was a, a car. Uh, to the owner of this dog was proposed to get an amputation of the leg, and this was the result after the use of laser. Other situation common when we get very good result, are uh, all the things that uh, regarding the skin can be resumed in uh, burns, uh, hot spot, uh, anaglas infection, lead granulomas, and everything that is mm, involving uh, the uh, skin. And we have inflammation, edema, pain, and we need, first of all, regeneration can be healed from the laser. Because over a normal list of pathology where we can talk and uh, to have a menu of what we can apply. An important thing is the situation that when we can and the result that we can have in different kind of situation. For example, anal glands infection is very, very important, but like perianal fistulas. For example, in German Shepherd in Italy, we have a lot of atopic dog and they have a lot of serious problems. Sometimes the drug therapy is not able to get result and with the laser we have a very good uh, uh, a very good healing of the situation up to a complete healing or up to a very good a very big reduction of the pathology so they can afford surgery in a easier way other application are dermatitis and pyodermitis they are very very important because laser has been able to demonstrate a good effectiveness on bacteria so in this period, uh, when we are facing a lot of antimicrobial anti resistance, laser can be really helpful, especially if the problem is localized. And this is a German Shepherd uh, with a um, pyodermitis. It was um, a methicillin resistant. They used amicacin uh, for injection. After a lot of time they were not able to heal the space between the fingers and it was the result after the application of laser. 
we normally get very, very good result, better result when we are dealing in vivo problem than in vitro. And another point of strength of the MLS laser therapy is the result that we get in stomatitis. This is a clinical case that we had, and it was made about this was made a publication that I will show you later. And this is the result before and after the application of the laser therapy. Then, when we have to start with the use of laser, before we check, sorry, before we uh, decide which kind of protocol we can apply, the first thing to check is the level, uh, the heel of the skin. How is the skin? Do we have an intact skin with no injuries, with no wounds, or are we facing some uh, wounds where we have a loss of tissues and an infection that can be severe sometimes. So in this situation, we can decide the right protocol to apply to the lesion. Then talking about wound, we have two dedicated programs in the device. And with the program wound, we um, normally um, are going to dedicate this kind of protocol when we have a loss of tissue and we have to make a second intention closure of the wound, the first thing to take in account is if the skin is not intact like this situation and I have a big damage, I have to clean in a proper way all the part of the wound for the um, dyed tissue that can be uh, something that is going to make uh, a regeneration uh, uh, with a low level of um, in a in a very low in a long time in, I need long time because I have to face the situation so first of all I need to clean surgically all the wound to get a good situation and then I will start clipping the fur taking away all the uh, necrotic tissues and then I go to apply the laser before using any drug, any uh, topic drug, I use the laser in a point-by-point point situation, and uh, sorry, in a point-by-point point mode, starting from the edges of the wound, and then when I end the points, I move in a scanning mode over the, um, over the wound, avoiding to touch it, so I avoid to get some uh, bacteria going directly to the handpiece. The second step is that in the next day, I will move from um, infect, uh, contaminated wound to wound, and then after the laser treatment, I can apply all the topic drug I need. For example, I can apply cream, honey, everything you prefer, you need, or you are used to use in this kind of situation, and then I apply only a, a very thin layer, so in the next application of laser, I don't have to clean and to take away everything, uh, causing damages to the, to the tissue that is going to proliferate. So remember, and then it is possible, obviously, to treat the animal in a, uh, in a systemic, with a systemic therapy like uh, antibiotic, like painkiller, and inflammatory drugs, everything you need. But remember that when you make the treatment directly over the wound, you have to avoid to be to get something between the handpiece and on the tissues they are dealing with. Then, as I told you before, we move with the infected wound because we notice that this kind of protocol has a very good effect on bacteria and the number of bacteria is going to decrease after the use of laser. In the following days, you move to the wound program with the same protocol of application in a point by point application uh, remaining to the edges of the wound. And then you stay half or one centimeter from the surface because you are um, supplying all the energy you need because you, you, we normally suggest to use the laser re, uh, keeping the contact with the skin. But in this situation where you don't have the skin anymore, you have to avoid to touch for the mm, contamination of the lens, you apply the, the wound program, and only if you have a very large wound or if the wound is severely infected, like some cases, some clinical cases that we, you can find 
I will show you one that you can find on our um, on our site. You can make the treatment for the first days uh, directly two times per day to reduce the pain, the swelling, the inflammation, and then to fight bacterial proliferation. While for other skin pathologies over whom we have some dedicated protocols and they were prepared from an Italian doctor. He's very skilled, really skilled. He wrote books and, and is very skilled for dermatology. So he moved and he used the laser and he prepared us all the protocols that you can find listed in the menu. This is to uh, increase the to um, increase the use and to get an easier way to um, apply the laser when you are facing the wound. Then, if the wound is infected, move to infected wound three times maximum, and if possible, every day or at least every other day. But the best result you will get if you make the treatment every day. Then after three times go on with the program wound until healing it's important because we notice that if you are going on using the infected wound you don't get the same good result than when you move to wound probably the way you apply the energy the way to you supply the energy to the wound if we have the same dosage level but is different the way we supply with the two program and in this use changing from infected wound to wound, we get the best result. This is to explain the level of uh, efficiency of MLS laser on, uh, um, on uh, Candida, Candida albicans. They made a study in uh, human medicine uh, for this kind of pathology in people that had uh, the development of Candida after chemotherapy for tumors. Sometimes it's, um, it becomes a very big problem in the mouth and they are no more able to get result with the drug. They treated the candida with MLS with a special protocol that you can find listed here. You can find the picture here with the different times, different um, energy of level and so on. And they notice a reduction up to from 70 to 5 to 90 percent of the number of colony. Another very good result was made from Dr. Di Baudo and Cabassi. It was study was made by the um, University in Parma. They made this uh, trial, white, uh, white Island West Terrier, male, four years old, and they made they uh, they take the they took the sample before laser therapy and immediately after. You can see the difference in the number of bacteria before and immediately after the treatment. It was only one treatment. And uh, the kind of bacteria was Staphylococcus pseudointermedius. So we were, we really are able to reduce the number of bacteria with all the other uh, effect that laser has on the tissues, especially pain, edema, and first of all, remember always the regeneration because we are working uh, the, sorry, the very big difference that you can have between the normal use of drug and the use of laser is that fact that with the laser you are going to stimulate the tissue to get a good regeneration, while the normal drug, between the normal drug that you can use, none of them is able to get a good level of regeneration like the laser. And this is, can be uh, noticed in a very good way when you're dealing with the wounds. This is another study that was made on mice, and they noted a reduction in methicillin resistance Staphylococcus aureus in the mice using this kind uh, of dosage. Remember that dosage in laser uh, can be uh, compared to the level of uh, milligram pro kilo when you're using drugs. So they used this level of energy, five joules centimeter square, and they noticed a lower number of um, uh, bacteria after the administration of the laser. And I want to introduce you a clinical case. This clinical case is very impressive. It's a cat, it's an Italian case, and it's a cat with a very big wound. The cat was found from the vet by the house and was wandering the street with a severe lesion in the back of the body. 
and the tissues were necrotic and the smell was very bad, was nauseating, so the cat was taken to the clinic. They made anesthesia and a curettage, surgical curettage of the wound, and this was uh, the situation after the curettage. They began immediately to apply MLS laser therapy, and they made it twice a day. And after this uh, uh, situation, the cat began to eat uh, immediately. But the next day, they noticed that the um, stools came out from the rectum instead of coming out from the anal sphincter. So they made anesthesia again, and they sutured the wall of the rectum. But in the next day, the stool came out from the same lesion. During this uh, situation, you, when the cat uh, was in clinic, uh, they made uh, twice a day the treatment with the program infected wound. And as the situation of the rectum was no more, a, they were no more able to heal it, they arrived to clean the um, wound because they had a, a, the possibility to get closer with the edges of the wound. And this um, doctor decided to put a probe inside the rectum to avoid the pressure of the stools during the passage going up to the sphincter, the pressure could destroy again the suture. This situation was kept for 20 days about, and so they took it away and the situation was completely healed. The tube was, remo was removed 20 days later. And as a result, this was the final result, as in many, of, in many cases, this kind of situation, the found it dog uh, was uh, sorry cat was taken from uh, the vet now the cat lives in the house of the vet this is the situation he only has uh, a slightly uh, deviated uh, anus uh, but with no impact on the control of the pieces and the cat lives uh, completely in a good way in a with a, with the new owner that is the the vet and so this was a very good result uh, from the starting situation that you saw before. And Giacomo, do I go on? Do you, do you have any question? Okay, I go on. And uh, um, another protocol that we have in the device is for the treatment of perianal fistula. As I told you before, it's a very big problem, especially in German Shepherd. We have two programs dedicated like wound because they are compared. So you start with the perianal fistula infected for three times, and then you move to uh, perianal fistula going on with the, uh, with the treatment. In this situation, you normally have to make the treatment in a point by point. You don't need the scanning uh, application. Then a very important thing is that you have to be sure that you are dealing with the perianal fistula or an infection of the glands. You only don't have to treat when you are, if you are, if you think you are mm, treating a tumor, an adenoma of the glands, because an adenoma, uh, in this situation, when you are uh, facing a tumor, you don't have to use the laser for the high rate of regeneration of the tissues uh, that you will cause uh, in the next uh, days after the therapy. Normally, this kind of problem can be uh, treated every day in a point-by-point -point, uh, um, way, remaining half to, from one centimeter from the surface of the skin. Then you have to go to understand what is uh, the problem that will, uh, has been able to cause the fistula to, to increase. For example, autoimmune system, atopy, allergy, or uh, some situation uh, uh, linked to nutrition uh, or other uh, or other every other thing that can be useful to get a very good uh, uh, level of diagnosis so you can handle the fistula with the laser and then you will change the kind of feed the kind of food you will change uh, the or you will make more for example if it's uh, an allergy to some uh, uh, please uh, uh, and so on, you will make a good uh, study to understand 
what was the starting situation, how to manage it and how to make a very good maintenance because in many situations in for this patient it's very important to uh, administrate uh, immunosuppressive drugs like cyclosporine or a long-lasting treatment with steroids uh, and in this situation uh, sometimes you will use antibiotics too the use of laser will reduce all these drugs to be supplied so you can handle you can control and reduce the um, level of inflammation and level of pain and the size of the fistulas and so this is to remember that when you are facing a perianal fistula you use the contaminated or infected program dedicated three times maximum then you move to perianal fistula up to the healing and then if the situation is based on an immunitary problem on a, an atopic dog for example you will uh, talk to the owner to get a maintenance program to reduce uh, the mm, number of times that the dog has problems or to decrease the size of the preanal fistula for example if the dog has to make surgery to um, to take away all the fistulas is a very good situation to use this kind of protocol to reduce them to the minimum size to the uh, minimal level of size so when the surgeon will have to take away the tissues um, the total tissue to be removed will be less because you are nearby the anal sphincter and the problem is that if you move if you um, take away too much tissues uh, too much tissue you will cause uh, the dog not to control in a proper way the stools now this is a an italian breed um, maremano bruzzese shepherd maremma shape sheep dog it's a 40 kilos dog and sometimes uh, he, he doesn't like to be touched too much especially in painful places and he developed the fistulas based on uh, hypertrophy of the prostate this was a static situation you can see the fistulas and he received 11 treatments in three weeks together with topic application of honey it was uh, treated in a point by point modality over the two fistulas using the uh, contaminated fistula and then they moved to fistula this was they recorded all the treatments and you can see how was the situation during the treatment after the three days after six treatments you can begin the granulation can begin to see the granulation tissue and from the ninth treatment you can see the reduction of the size of the fistulas and at the end of the treatment it was completely healed and so you can compare the starting situation with the final one remember it's very important because in this case you can apply the laser avoiding to touch you can stay half centimeter one centimeter from the surface you don't have to touch the dog they don't love to be touched in this part of the body and they normally try to avoid especially if it's painful and the only thing to take in account is that you are not facing an adenoma or sarcoma or a tumor generally speaking if you are if you think you are um, facing a tumor make a cytologic assessment of the situation and then you can decide if you can go on applying the laser or not if you can apply the laser you will get a very good result because the treatment the two points normally are going to last up to 16 seconds it is very 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 fast and very effective and then this is another program we have we move to the yeah you was talking about the perianal fistula you can use the laser in the lick granuloma and in this situation we don't have a dedicated protocol because uh, we can face several situations and so we'll, I, will, I will explain now to you how to face uh, this kind of problem normally you have it in the carpal area and it's typically the dog and then you have the dog that is going on licking for hours and hours and hours during the day the skin over the carpus and the grade of severity is different you have, can have only 
uh, a, a darker skin with a, um, less uh, fur up to arriving to the loss of the tissues, uh, uh, like, uh, sorry, the situation that you can see here. And uh, with the development of a real ulcer, we love lot of, a lot of skin is no more present because the dog going on leaking has eliminated. So, first of all, you surely have a skin problem that is, can be a primary problem. For the, 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 can, this can be the reason why the dog began to leak, or you can have a skin problem linked to the fact that the dog leaked too much itself, but can have a, the reason can be a very painful situation to the underlying joint, or sometimes you can have a vascular and nerve dysfunction, or sometimes you can face a behavioral problem, for example, anxiety, chronic anxiety in dogs, and they go on leaking the carpus for a lot of time, for a lot of hours during the days, for many days in the, in the week. So, in all those three cases, you have to face a dermatological damage, so you need to apply, for example, the program HUND, infected HUND in this situation, or going on with HUND, or sometimes for this kind of application, if the HUND is intact, you can apply um, chronic uh, inflammation or chronic pain. And then you have to make a good uh, diagnosis, a good assessment of the situation, because it can be only a dermatological problem. And so you make uh, all the um, step to get to the right diagnosis, the examination of the hair, a cytological uh, evaluation with the, uh, you put the, the glass uh, directly on the skin and look at uh, the microscope. Uh, you apply, you make a scotch test uh, in the surrounding tissue and so on. So you get a, a dermatological assessment. And then if you have the problem to the joint, uh, you can apply the laser for this reason because the dog leaked too much. And then you go on with a systemic physiotherapic approach uh, or treatment in physiotherapy to get the result for the joint. And if it's a behavioral problem, you apply the dermatological protocol to reduce this, uh, and to heal the situation and then you will go on directly with the, uh, for example, if the dog needs um, uh, um, uh, drugs uh, like anxiolytics, uh, antidepressant, or if you have to manage the dog's life in a different way, but as you as, have to face all these kinds of damages, you will apply this kind of protocol. And remember that sometimes wound is not the primary cause that you have to, to deal with. So this is to resume what we told. If it's talking, starting from the, um, this kind of problem, that is, it's always a skin problem, but we don't know if it's primary or a development for the, as the dog leak too much, you always have to treat with infected wound if necessary wound if it's uh, not uh, infected but it's quite impossible if you have a wound the dog leaking will cause the infection of the wound for three times maximum and then you go on with wound if you are facing a chronic situation but you don't have the wound you only have uh, a, um, a darker uh, aspect of the skin you can apply the problem the program a uh, chronic uh, um, chronic uh, uh, pain or chronic inflammation, depending on the situation, and then you will face this kind of problem. If it's a joint problem, it's a link to the, you may have to make a assessment of the situation. If uh, uh, start with, with the dedicated protocols for the wound, and then to go to check the um, gait and the movement and the way the dog moves to take the right uh, uh, approach to use the laser for example for a, a painful joint uh, to treat with the global approach that we'll see the next time if it's a behavior problem you make the treatment as we saw before for the skin and you will change the dog management and if needed you can try to uh, move to the behaviorist or if you are a behaviorist you will use the right uh, drug 
to get a, a result and then you will act directly on the skin up to the healing of the situation. This was a leaf granuloma that we had in Italy. We, uh, the owner was uh, not able to put cream because the dog leak, leaked it away immediately. He didn't bear the collar, so uh, every time that they, they used the collar, the dog uh, was becoming crazy and then destroyed the collar. It was a, um, an Amstaff. And every ointment, everything that was applied or a bandage or a wrapping was completely destroyed in a few minutes for the dog. They used the laser and this was the result after only three MLS treatments. Then we move to another kind of problem. We are talking about the hotspot. In this uh, situation, we normally call it hotspot, traumatic pyodermitis, acute moist dermatitis, and this is the situation that normally you notice when the dog arrives in the clinic. Sometimes it can be uh, a little bit worse uh, if the dog begins to scratch uh, for the itch and then uh, he, has, uh, he can have uh, damages caused from the scratching of the, of the lesion. This is the aspect you can see in the dog. And sometimes, uh, um, especially in Italy, is linked to the change uh, during the season when the uh, weather is going to be warmer and more uh, with more wet and sometimes can be caused from um, atopy from food allergies or uh, uh, for example fleas uh, ticks uh, and so on the treatment can be made in a point by point uh, application or in a scanning application based on the size of the lesion if you apply of obviously in the scanning mode or the point-to-point -point mode avoid to touch the surface because you have the infection so you don't need to touch it uh, it's uh, quite common in large size dogs in italy with a uh, thick fur especially during the summer uh, at the end of the spring and the uh, beginning of the summer and um, the first thing you have to do is to clip the fur to clean it uh, and to apply the laser and uh, we suggest to apply the laser um, in a different way when you are facing, like uh, when you are facing the wound, you apply the laser every two days for two weeks. For example, you make six uh, laser therapy in two weeks, one day yes and one day no. Then you will reduce the time and you will apply the laser two times per week in the next two weeks to get about 10 treatments in one month so you have three the first three the second two the third and two the fourth and you get a very good result this is the situation to remember how to take the how to use sorry the laser you have you will find a dedicated program protocol for the hotspot you need to clip the four and three times per week for two weeks normally you can arrive up to three weeks if necessary, but then you may, after the two weeks, you move two times per week for other two weeks. And if the condition is healed, it's okay. Or if it's not healed, go on making two treatments per week. It depends from the size, the situation of the patient. Uh, for example, chronic situation or uh, older dog uh, will have a will need more more will need more time for the treatment and then at, you arrive to the healing this allows you to use less antibiotics to use for example uh, a topic treatment instead of a uh, administrative antibiotic uh, systemic uh, per mouth or for in, uh, injection and then you will get a very good result now i want to show you this clinical case it's quite uncommon because they, uh, it, uh, it comes from Sweden. It's a dog, and you can see here the, uh, the rear part of the right ear. Uh, the dog arrived in the clinic, is a 10 years old dog, and the vet decided to clip the fur, to clean the, um, the hot spot, and to make only one treatment. And then they, she made the, uh, um, she took the picture during the development in six days and this was the result it's very fast it lasts 30 seconds the dog arrived in clinic 
it's a 10 years old golden retriever and they only performed one MLS laser therapy treatment, only one. This is at the first examination, two days after MLS therapy, and six days after. So they avoided then to, touch, to use uh, drugs, but for example, sometimes if the mm, lesion are uh, are wide, are uh, for example in the back or another part of the of the dog, the body of the dog, you can decide to make a shampoo therapy with chlorhexidine. Uh, you can make uh, two times per week the shampoo therapy and three times per week the laser treatment. Then we go on with the, uh, another protocol dedicated to the dog that we have is a bacterial cutaneous infection. The difference between this one and the hotspot we have uh, talked uh, up to now is that in this situation the infection is a little bit in depth in the tissues it's not only in the surface probably it's linked to the to uh, the pro uh, to a problem of the immunitary system or the fact that the dog scratched too much uh, causing the infections from moving from the surface to a deeper level uh, to a deeper uh, layer in the skin. In this situation, you need the same kind of treatment, clipping the fur. Eventually, if you need antibiotics, you need to make a microbial sensitivity for the, um, for the dog to understand which kind of bacteria is involved. And then you make the treatment in a point by point if the areas are small or in a scanning mode if they are larger, avoiding to touch for to not to get the infection from the uh, surface of the skin to the lens. And then another important thing is that if the lesion is this one, I suggest to clip a little bit more the full, or if you don't want to clip more, you treat here the surrounding tissue to increase the uh, immunitary system of the surrounding tissue by the wound by the uh, infection and you will get a very very good result this is how to use the laser in this situation one very important thing is to make the sensitivity test for the bacteria and then you use this kind of protocol three times per week for two weeks and then two times per week for other two weeks if needed you can use the appropriate systemic antibiotic therapy based on the test if the situation after 10 times is not healed again, go on with this kind of treatment. Sometimes uh, you can get uh, you can get the situation where you need uh, uh, more um, blood, for example, some blood analysis to take uh, under control if, and to control if the um, endocrinal system is okay, is uh, good, or if you have to face uh, some other problem to the thyroid, to the thyroid gland or other situation like that, especially if you are dealing with an old dog. Or sometimes it's only a worse situation that started from a hot spot, the dog scratched too much and it's not based on other situation and then it uh, can be a easy, uh, easy situation to treat or a complicated one based on the on this healing status, on the heal status of the dog. This is a very interesting case that we had. It was presented in Italy uh, from the same uh, vet who prepared the, uh, all the protocols for the skin. This is a German Shepherd. It was an atopic dog and he developed uh, this problem to the skin in the space between the fingers and another serious problem was by the um, in the space between the lips and the skin this german shepherd uh, arrived to the doctor after he had uh, a treatment with a, a potentiated uh, um, amoxicillin where they get no result they made um, they tested the kind of bacteria they, they had and to face and it was a um, staphylococcus pseudointermedius methicillin resistant so they began to use cyclosporine because the dog was a topic they used a lot of antibiotics uh, and between them uh, they found that the bacteria was sensitive to 
rifaximin and to amikacin. They had no good result with rifaximin, so they moved to amikacin. They had to make injection every day for 40 days. And, but they were not able to heal the situation. Where they applied the MLS laser therapy, this was the result. As MLS has a very good level, uh, sorry, a very good effect, uh, it was very effective on the skin, on, especially on the bacteria, and especially if you are treating in vivo while in vitro, we don't have the same result. Probably it's a, a effect that MLS has not always directly on bacteria, but have on the immunitary system and on the system that you can find inside the animal, increasing the um, vasodilation, increasing the arrival of oxygen in the bloodstream. If the drug is, is if the drug moves inside the body directly in the bloodstream, moved for globulin or so on, will arrive more blood, more drug, and you are going to stimulate the uh, immunitary system to have a better reaction because we notice this situation in other studies for other tissues that we were able to reduce the level of inflammation, increasing some kind of uh, white cells uh, instead of others, able to reduce uh, the pain, uh, the swelling, and to get a very good regeneration of the tissues. And this was the result after 10 MLS treatments. Now we are going to face uh, the treatment of alopecia X, uh, that you will find two dedicated protocols uh, in, the, um, in the device. You know, alopecia X is a, has a lot of definition, like uh, uh, castration responsive dermatosis, dermatosis related to sexual gland dysfunction, biopsy responsive alopecia, and so on. And sometimes they think that uh, they have uh, a problem with the growth hormone, and normally it uh, affects uh, Nordic reeds and the poodle between two and six years, and can, they can be neuter or not. And um, if you see um, an histological part, uh, you know, histolo if you get an histolog histological examination of the skin, you have an increase in the number of hair follicles in the cutter's intelligence stage. And they tried a lot of uh, systemic therapy, growth hormone, melatonin, trilostan, and uh, uh, treatment for the skin with antiseboroic, uh, keratolytic uh, shampoos, and so on. But laser therapy has um, made in two phases is going is is going on with a very good result as we can see before uh, we will see here now sorry we have uh, the three stages of the development of the skin that you can see and normally to get to um, the right diagnosis you need to have the biopsy because you see a different or a very big number of uh, changement in the stages of the mm, skin, sorry, of the hair, and then you have a different shape uh, of the follicles by noticed by the biopsy. And then this is what we suggest. You use the scanning mode alopecia one, two times per week for two weeks. Then you move to alopecia two, two times per week for four weeks and then one time per week for four weeks in a scanning mode. If the situation is healed, okay. If you need more treatment, you can treat until healing two or three times per week. You normally need a lot of time because the size of alopecia is big. And now I want to show you the situation, sorry, a clinical case that we had in Italy and uh, the dog arrived in the clinic as it was a 10 years old dwarf poodle with uh, no more hair in the back and uh, the skin was in a bad situation. The doctor made blood samples, took blood for samples, made analysis, made biopsy and arrived to get the uh, result of alopecia X. And so he only applied the biotin supplement and MLS laser therapy. He made eight total treatment, 30 minutes of scanning every treatment. And this was after the first treatment. And going on with the treatments, he, he arrived to the result that you can see. This was after the fourth treatment. 
And starting from the first one, what he noticed was the uh, level of the skin was in a better situation. The skin was uh, um, less uh, fatty was, uh, and changed the aspect after only one treatment and he noticed a very quick regrowth of the food. And this was made only with a laser and biotin that is, is, a, a, is a vitamin that can be uh, it is normally is given in this kind of situation. Okay, and then, for example, another we go to we move to another protocol we have dedicated to the um, dermatology is the post surgery. When you, uh, the difference between wound and post surgery, they both are wounds, but in the wound we um, we don't have any tissue over the wound. And so we will apply infected wound, as I told you before, in a point by point mode on the edges and in a scanning mode over the wound. And we can apply this protocol up to healing or up to reduce the size and then to move to surgery. And so when I have the skin over the surface of the wound, I will apply post-surgery because the level of administration of energy and the dosage in just centimeter square is different. This kind of program can be made immediately after surgery to reduce the swelling, the pain, and to increase the rate of regeneration of the tissue that had surgery. Or if the surgery was uh, was uh, too much bleeding, or uh, sometimes uh, uh, you need, uh, for example, uh, when you have to neuter a dog or a cat and uh, she's latting in the situation wait uh, for example eight hours 12 hours to apply the laser because uh, the vessels of the mamas can be in the and um, have they uh, have been cut and if you apply the laser immediately after uh, you can cause vasodilation and so the clot of the that was um, blocking the blood can open and you can cause a little bit of bleeding and you will notice the uh, it's like an edema of the of the wound you normally stay uh, half centimeter from the skin three four times every other day if possible as i told you it start immediately or wait 24 hours is too much is uh, more than enough eight hours but to be prudent you stay 12 hours if you needed stay, sorry, if you closed the wound with staples instead of making a normal suture, as staples are metal and they can keep a little bit, they can get warmer during the treatment, make the treatment in a scanning mode, move a little bit faster instead of low, moving slowly, and reduce the intensity of the energy to 25%. It means that when you apply post surgery, the device is set it in 100% of emission. You can uh, select this program. In the lower part of the screen, you have the intensity that normally it is 100%. You reduce it to 25% and then you apply the treatment. So surgery, if there was bleeding during surgery, wait 12 hours before treating. 24 is to be really, really prudent. Then use the protocol post-surgery at least three times in a scanning mode every other day on the suture. And then if you need, sorry, if you use the staples, reduce the intensity to the post-surgery. So you move from four joule centimeter square when you are at 100% to one joule centimeter square when you're applying 25% intensity because you are only applying one quarter of the normal emission. So if I had four, one quarter of four is one, and I have the same result for pain, swelling, edema, and regeneration, but I won't get a higher uh, temperature of the staples. Okay, then we have another program is a eosinophilic granuloma in the cat. As it's a complicated situation to face in the skin, is uh, the, it's called complex because you have different shapes and different 
symptoms uh, that you can find in the different parts of the body. So you can normally have the plaque in the belly or in the hips. Sometimes you have the granuloma in the posterior part of the hips, the chin or in the lips. Or sometimes you have the indolent ulcer on the upper lip. So as this is a, a symptom with different uh, manifestation, different shapes in the part of the body, you will apply the laser with the uh, eosinophilic Roma program always or in a scanning mode if it's very small, in a point, sorry, uh, <laughs> point by point mode if it's very small, or in a scanning mode if it's wider. But you have to go on and to understand why it developed. So normally it's allergy based because they have uh, ectoparasite, parasites, endoparasites, uh, uh, like worms uh, in, the, in the gut, or sometimes uh, they can be um, sensitive to environmental allergens or food allergens. So you can reduce the scratching, the pain, the edema that the cat feels, and then to, to make the changement, for example, a therapy for uh, the parasites, uh, for the fleas, uh, a therapy for the um, endoparasites like uh, ascari ascaridis and so on, and then apply the laser. Normally, the therapy is based on steroids to reduce the, the age, uh, to avoid the cat to scratch or to leak too much, uh, because this will cause a, an infection of the uh, of the part of the body and if it's very very severe sometimes uh, somebody uh, arises up to use the cyclosporine in my opinion if you start immediately with the laser because remember every time that you have to use a laser you will get the best result from the uh, if you begin to use the laser from the beginning from the first time that you have the case because in this situation, you have the best effect. If you use the laser when the situation is chronic, as every other drug, if we compare the laser to a drug, you need more treatment because you're facing a chronic situation, long lasting, for example, uh, started two weeks before or one month before, and it's quite, quite common, not only in dermatology, but for uh, joint problems that you see the dog, the owner to take the dog, takes the dog to the clinic uh, after one month that the dog uh, is limping. So in this situation, the result won't be uh, so fast like to apply the laser in a acute one when you can see the changement from the first, uh, from the really from the first uh, time that you treat it. If you begin immediately, you will get the best result. So, if you have to face the eosinophilic granuloma, if the granuloma was scratched or leaked too much and so you have an infection, use infected wound in the beginning. Then you move to the eosinophilic granuloma skin protocol for three week, times per week for two weeks and then two times per week for other two weeks. Then, based on what is necessary, the right drug therapy, um, the changement of the... Um, of the diet, for example, if it was a, a something linked to the food. So you need to take the normal therapy and you apply the laser together. And this will grant you the best result you can have in this kind of situation. Because uh, from a study that was made in the USA, for example, uh, if uh, you, mm, in a normal situation of a, of a clinic uh, from 40 to 60 percent of the uh, patient can be patient that need laser therapy. Most of the times is that only because we don't think that laser can be used in this kind of situation but you normally will be able to use the laser in a half of your patient. If you apply the laser and you see the result for the beginning you will get very more involved in the laser therapy and you will get skilled and you will propose and you will the the, the one that you say to the owner oh this situation well let's let's have laser so we get a good result and i have a clinical case to show it's a cat with a problem to the lip and this cat uh, had a problem he was no more able to eat 
he went to see the food and stopped and went away and was no more able to close the mouth. And they noticed that it was a lesion uh, with pain and swelling, and it was it was uh, located in the base of the lower lip. As you can see here, this is the granuloma. So they applied the laser, they applied the dedicated protocol, but not only on the point uh, that was involved, but in other surrounding points to reduce the reaction of the part of the body, probably is linked to the uh, higher level of reaction of the mucosa instead of the skin. And then they made this treatment, they were only six, and after three, they noticed that the volume of the lesion was, decre was decreased in about 30%, as you can see in the image here. And after six treatments, the cat was able to close the mouth completely, and the lesion size was 60% less. And you can see. And so at the end of the cycle, the lesion disappeared, and the cat was completely normal, came back to his normal daily routine. Then another situation, another common situation where you can use the laser is for external otitis. We don't have a dedicated protocol at the moment we are studying, but we suggest to use different protocol based on the symptoms to make it easier. We normally suggest the treatment in a, with two points, one directly into the ear and one to the channel going down starting from the ear and then the tract that is uh, perpendicular before it goes directly to the tympanus. And remember always as the external otitis is a multifactorial based on all the things that you can see here, the conformation, the anatomy of the ear, the predisposition in some breeds, uh, and then the complication given from bacteria, yes, uh, parasites, uh, and so on. It's quite complicated to get a good uh, uh, diagnosis. What is important is a cytological assessment. And then you begin to use the laser immediately. For this reason, every time that you make, that you see these patients, normally you suggest to apply drops. You have a lot of drops in the market, very good. Sometimes can be applied every one time per week and they are long lasting, but normally when the owner has to apply the drugs, to apply the drops at home, is no more able because it's very painful. So if you make a treatment every day, two points per year, if, if, it's, uh, if both are involved or two points per one year, you make a lower, the dog will have a lower level of inflammation, a lower level of pain, a lower uh, level of edema, and after four or five treatment, for the owner will be very easy to apply the drops because the ear is no more painful or the level of pain is very, very, very low. And so it can be handled in an easier way by the owner because sometimes you are going to, in an indirect way, we vets are going to create a frustration in the owner that is not able to um, put the drops inside the ear because every time that the dog, the dog sees the owner taking the drops, uh, he runs away and goes under the table, under the bed, outside in the garden, doesn't come back. And so it's very frustrating for the owner because it's a uh, to apply the drops uh, can be easy sometimes in the clinic because uh, you're keeping the dog, but when it's uh, in the home, uh, is is difficult. So in the situation applying the laser, you will have a very good result. Point by point, one into the ear and the other laterally on the course of the ear canal. If you are facing a chronic or acute or hyperacute, you will change the amount of energy. For example, I suggest to start with the, in a, a chronic situation, for example, yes, uh, otitis complicated from malassezia and so on, you apply chronic, uh, mm, chronic inflammation protocol, and normally it's not so painful. Uh, you can, uh, you don't need uh, uh, to be very careful for the level of energy. When you are facing an acute or hip or hyperacute situation, you need to change from um, chronic to acute protocol 
And when it's hyperacute, and I mean hyperacute, those situations when you try to, to to clean a little bit the the ear and you see that the ear begins to bleed a little bit and it's really, really painful, you normally need to reduce the amount of energy. So you can decide to use the uh, acute inflammation program, reducing up to 25%. And so you work with one joule centimeter square instead of four. And this will help you a lot. Or in other situation, you can use uh, the program uh, dedicated to the, mm, uh, to the mouth uh, because it has a very low level of energy. And uh, for the only first time, uh, you apply that and then you stay with the uh, acute inflammation to one joule centimeter square. And so this is what I told you before. Change the level of uh, energy. I use it in a point by point, point to point mode, two points, three times per week for two weeks. But I suggest that in an acute situation, every day you get a better result. Then if the owner can come in the clinic, you can apply this protocol three times per week for two weeks and uh, like the other situation. If he can't come so, mm, so, so many times, make every time one three, uh, sorry, every day one three twenty four at least four or five days, and then you can apply the drops. If the situation is based on chronic situation, based on uh, allergy, atopy, and so on, uh, uh, anatomical um, anatomic situation, you can decide to prepare a maintenance program because the maintenance program can be done or when the situation begins to be uh, to become a little bit painful or and you see how many times does it take to uh, the dog to develop again the problem then you can decide to make the maintenance based on the time that if, if every month the dog begins to scratch the ear uh, you say come to me in the clinic uh, after 20 days and we make the treatment before so in the next times probably the time will be needed to develop the otitis will be longer and then we have to face uh, the last one but not uh, very important but is very very difficult to face especially in italy uh, we have uh, the stomatitis we have uh, two protocols um, in the device and they were made from a veterinary that took MLS he only makes he is a de veterinary dentistry and he only works in the mouth of dogs and cats and he's uh, making these uh, treatments he developed uh, two protocols that you can see in the device and made uh, a publication that we I will show you now so normally when we are talking about stomatitis we have uh, it involves uh, gingiva and mucus in the membrane with inflammation and ulceration in the dog is quite uncommon sometimes uh, these are the situation that you can find with candida but mls is very effective in candida metabolic disorder for example problem to the kidney in other situation can cause of problems to the mouth, gingivitis, uh, or sometimes it's immune mediated uh, with the um, plasma, uh, plasma cells or uh, lympho cells uh, uh, infiltrating the, uh, the gingiva or they cause trench mouth uh, with, a, with some kind of bacteria that can cause the problem. But this normally in Italy we see 300 cat and one dog with gingivitis. The cat uh, is well known. It has different names uh, proposed because they, you can find on some books uh, feline chronic stomatitis, gingival stomatitis, prositis, and so on. But the most important difference is based on the um, area that is involved. The type one is the oral cavity, the type two in the in the caudal area. So it's uh, really a prositis, and it's difficult. It's more difficult to treat. In this situation, the etiology is uncertain and it normally is a multifactorial disease based on the bacteria that they have in the mouth or the plaque they are 
causing. The virus is involved that many times they start when the cat was a kitten and was taken from the directly when from the mother when uh, was lactating and they are involved the calice virus and herpes virus and 88 percent of cats with stomatitis have both of them in saliva these bacteria Bartonella insulae and sometimes the complication can be given from the other virus like FLV or FIV FIV, sorry, and then some of them are positive with this percentage you can see for the development of stomatitis. These are the symptoms that you can see, and uh, normally you have a very big halitosis and dysphagia. Normally the cat is taken into the clinic because he stops eating. He goes to the in, in front of the food, try to smell the food, and then goes away. And so the owner takes to you the cat and tells you that it's acute because uh, he stopped uh, eating. Why? Well, you know that it's uh, something that was going, if you, uh, you know, is going, started, for example, one month ago, he ate less, uh, ate less uh, kibbles, uh, then moved to the other kind of food, uh, um, to humid food, uh, and then in, in, in can, uh, and then he began to move, to eat some small parts uh, at the end lived uh, the owner both uh, um, uh, mousse for example and then the, dog, the cat eat, uh, ate only a few licked a little bit and then stopped so you know it's chronic one and so uh, all the um, therapy proposed are these the most uh, in invasive is uh, the teeth extraction and sometimes it's the only one that works but dental care laser ablation of the tissue immunosuppressive chronic treatment with cyclosporine steroid all of them sometimes can start and have very good effect or no or completely no effect so as this kind of situation is quite common normally we know we can notice that when you apply the drugs the first time, you can see a good result. Going on with the time, the ability and the ability of the animal to react to to to, to get good result to the therapy becomes uh, lower. Up to when you don't see any result, and so you go and say you have we have to make the teeth extraction to try to reduce it. If you apply the laser immediately from the first time you can have a very good effect you can arrive to the teeth extraction after after years with a good level of, of life in the cat avoiding to give a lot of antibiotics and avoiding to give like it's quite common in italy injection of deposit steroid creating a good result at the beginning but after uh, for example one year or two years of therapy you won't get any result and the only thing to make is the tooth extraction for the side effects that you're going to cause to the animal this is a, a situation that we took with uh, our treatments and what we expect with MLS treatment when we apply the laser in a kitten in acute stomatitis and you see optimal clinical, clinical results from the first treatment and sometimes if it's only the only treatment you can have good results too when you are talking about the adult sometimes it depends on the etiology usually good result when it's chronic depending from the etiology from poor to good and when you have this situation for the positive steroid or immunocompromised cats from FLV or FIV, normally you need uh, a long a long number of treatments, and sometimes uh, you need uh, um, to get to the teeth extraction, to arrive to the teeth extraction, but because uh, the results are poor based on this first situation. The deposit steroid injection will decrease the ability of the mucosa inside the mouth to react and if you make a biopsy you can see a very bad situation as uh, Dr. Squarzoni who prepared us the protocol made. So 
the limitation for the laser treatment, especially not for the laser treatment, for the laser ability to face the situation is linked to the uh, how long did you or was the, the was used the slow release cort uh, steroids sorry cortisone is a problem for the translation is a slow release steroid the cat sometimes is so painful feels a lot of painful that when see somebody going closer to the mouth and doesn't want to be treated and begins to become aggressive and when the area is difficult to reach, but we can treat it from outside the mouth with a handpiece, or the pet owner can take the talk to the clinic for a lot for a big number of time. Contraindicated neoplasia, as I told you before, every time you have to face a neoplasia, the laser is contraindicated, and bleeding lesion because you are going to increase the vasodilation, the vascularization of the area that you're treating and so if there is some bleeding it can be uh, complicated so you normally have to wait up to the bleeding stops uh, and then you apply the laser this is a, a um, publication that was made with the nir laser therapy it, nir laser therapy is mls nir means near infrared because our wavelength uh, are the uh, 808 and 905 and they all are in the infrared so they are invisible using uh, they were used on feline stomatitis and then the outcomes of this preliminary study demonstrate that laser therapy with suitable treatment parameters can be effective in the management of stomatitis because they made um, two groups uh, they treated the two groups with different level of energy they saw the client the clinic situation and to get the very scientific result they made biopsy and immuno study uh, and i will show you now what they had they made two group one group was treated with 0 0.32 joule centimeter square is a very low level of uh, energy you normally i told you normally when we are dealing with the skin we stay up to two joules centimeter square or four joules centimeter square so 0 0.32 is very very low and another group was treated with a lower level of energy 0 0.16 joules centimeter square and what uh, the doctor noticed that the group treated with this amount of energy had a better result instead with the other one the group treated with less energy showed better results in you know, the examination and it's very important because at the moment normally with the laser one thing that is believed that is like uh, sometimes uh, ah, the more energy you apply you will get more result no it's not how much energy you will apply is the kind of emission you have and the right amount of energy to apply to get a clinical result because you always have to remember that the, when you have to deal with the laser you are treating cells so a high level of energy will give you a faster result but will give more side effects than a controlled emission like mls has this is the starting situation in the group two before and after laser therapy and at the end of the therapy from the clinical point of view you have a good result these are the images based on the biopsy the doctor made the group one a is pre-treatment b this is after the treatment with 0 0.32 joules centimeter square the group b in the picture c is before a treatment and d is after the treatment with a lower dose 0.16 joule centimeter square you can see the infiltration of the inflammatory cells is very very low in this situation instead a 0 0.32 um, joule centimeter square then they made an immunofluorescence analysis of cd3 plus cells it means they are T cells, as you can see, the number of T cells in a 
uh, that is here is a uh, in white the number of white here the, the color white here is low because the infiltrator infiltration of immune in uh, of uh, inflammation cells is very very low so it means that the t lymphocytes have um, had a, um, a lower number based on the anti-inflammatory effect of the MLS therapy. And this is a case from Thailand of a young cat that is very, very important for the result that we can have with the MLS laser. And this is a young cat. It's uh, five, five, six months uh, old. He came to the clinic with the infection, and so they had calicivirus, virus, herpes virus. We told that 88% of uh, cats have both viruses in the um, saliva, but with gingivitis, stomatitis, and rhinitis too, because they he had the mucopurulent nasal discharge, sneezing, fever, uh, he had no appetite uh, and appeared generally depressed. They took the blood sample and it was like he had no FIV or FLV together. The cat was so good that it was possible to treat him with the intraoral um, applicator without uh, making anesthesia. You can see the, this is the starting situation because normally I suggest to you that you can do the treatment and the treatment were born, were made from Dr. Squarzoni with the, the uh, normal handpiece remaining outside the closed mouth of the cat. And this allows you to treat all the painful situation because you stay from half to one centimeter from the cat making different points from outside. And if you need to treat fossitis, the deeper part of the mouth, you can apply the handpiece directly outside, but under the tongue, sending the laser inside the mouth. Because when you are in this situation, you can handle, you can treat the mucosa outside and the gingiva, but you're not able to treat the tongue and the deeper part of the mouth. So if you stay in the, um, under the, sorry, under the tongue, you can treat the deeper part of the mouth and then the tongue bites the tongue together with only one point. But if the cat allows you to treat with the intraoral, you can open the mouth of the cat and treat directly with a small probe all the lesions. The cat was treated with MLS and the multiple approach of treatment with mucolytics, supplements, antibiotics, antiviral agent, and so on. This is the situation the cat was so good that they were able to use the intraoral with the, without any sedation and was treated with gingivitis, stomatitis, acute and tongue ulcer that are in the menu for the intraoral, while in the handpiece menu you notice that you will have uh, acute and chronic uh, stomatitis and they made uh, the number of points every two days starting with 10 points and then reducing the number of points based on the reaction the lower level of inflammation of the mouth for example the ulcer of the tongue was treated for three times and then it was healed and they didn't treat anymore And what suggests the doctor who made this uh, clinical case is the same situation that I suggest to you. In this case, to increase the reaction, to increase, to decrease the time for the healing, to increase the regeneration of the tissue, use the drug together with the laser. And sometimes it's a multifactorial situation. You need to control antibiotic, sorry, bacteria with antibiotic, but sometimes not, because if the inflammation is given from calicivirus, virus, herpes virus, you normally know that antibiotics have no result at all on them. So sometimes it's 
better to use. Uh, they use interferon, omega interferon. They used lysine to decrease uh, the rate of proliferation of herpes virus, and then they use uh, they use the laser therapy. And they recommend to make a, a maintenance program with the laser therapy and, if needed, other drugs for the immunostimulant effect they can have, like interferon and lysine, for example. 